At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify linear regression, describe the relationship of linear regression and Gaussian, and appreciate the significance of linear regression in machine learning. So welcome to our series, Linear Regression. Although we already had a discussion about linear regression in our series entitled Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, but then I believe that our discussion about it was deeper in brief and wider in scope. So with that, I believe that it is always better that we have to go back to the very basic so that we would be able to digest, we would be able to understand and comprehend very properly what linear regression really is, especially when you are just starting out and when we talk about loss function, the cost function, and how we use the Gaussian and even the gradient descent in relation to linear regression would be somewhat difficult for you to be able to understand. So with this lesson, with this series, we will have it from the most basic going to the most advanced one. And at the end of our series, we are going to have the use of Python in application to linear regression. So linear regression is actually the most widely used algorithm for machine learning. And to give you a short background about this one, it is the workhorse between statistics and the supervised learning. So maybe you would like to ask me why is it that this model, linear regression, is called the workhorse. It's because it really performs hard work so as to make a connection between statistics and supervised learning. And also, when we are going to add some kernels or, let me write this one first, kernels or maybe some forms of basis function, then the result would be that linear regression can be used to also model non-linear relationship. So we're going to have this one as we go along with our discussion. And also, one more is that, although we're going to have later the concept about Gaussian in relation to linear regression, I may would like to say this, that when we're going to replace Gaussian with, let me write this one first, Gaussian with Bernoulli, or even the multinoli, multinoli distribution, then the result would be that our regression would now be applicable not for the linear one, but for the problem that is calling for the application of classification. So this is really what makes linear regression so powerful and challenging and at the same time very interesting because just a small twist about it, it can change its application and even it can change what kind of relationship we can apply the linear regression into. So with this, I would like to say that we really have to pay our full attention to linear regression so that in our next topics, we would be able to find it much easier. Let's now go to this formula. I believe that this mathematical expression is very much familiar to you. It's because we had this in our Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm and I suggest that please go back to that series because that will really give you the fundamental things you have to understand for you to be able to know and learn very quickly the different machine learning algorithm. So before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down there so that you would be updated of our lessons about machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, our data science tips, and making data science projects and more. Once again, this is a mathematical representation of linear regression. So what does this mean? So here, it shows that the response is actually a linear function of the inputs. That means for every input, there is always an equivalent one output. So we will have the different parts of this equation one by one. So let's start with this one first. This is WTX. So T here actually stands for transpose. So again, we are using here the matrix forms because in the real world, we are not just actually talking about only one input, but we are 
talking about lots of variables. So with this, we have to really represent or present our equation in matrix form so that we can properly and easily connect to the real world. So this one represents the inner or the scalar product between the input vector and that of the weight vector W. And what about this one? What is this? So this is actually the error, error, or we, call, we also call this one the noise. And this is the difference between the linear prediction and the real value. And also to make this equation neater and cleaner, we can also write this one in this form. So we have the summation of wx plus e. Our better understanding of this equation, we have to also think of the assumption of linear regression. And let's have this one. So this actually provides the assumption and the connection of the assumption to the formula that we have in here. So what is this assumption? The assumption is that our error is actually a Gaussian. And we say that when we say Gaussian, it has something to do with a normal distribution. Please don't forget that. Okay, this is always the assumption that our distribution is normal. And that is why we always have to make the pre-processing of our data before we apply the linear regressions because that also can help us identify the shape of our distribution. And also with that shape also, we would be able to compare the shape of our error to the shape of the data itself. And with that, we can have this kind of intuition as to what kind of data we are dealing with. So this error is actually denoted by, let me write here so that you can properly see. And if this is your first time to meet this notation, then you will have an idea. And if you already had this before, then you will be reminded. So this error is denoted by this, which means that this is the approximation of the natural distribution of the mu and the variance. And of course, if we are going to plot these points, then we may be given this kind of shape. And this is what we call the bell shape curve. And just think that this is a perfect bell shape. Okay. And our mean is here. And if this is really perfect, our mean and the median would be the same. So this is our assumption. Again, let me repeat this, that our assumption is that the distribution is a normal distribution or the one which is called Gaussian. And that is when we are going to graph the values of our E here, then this would give us a bell-shaped curve. Now the question is this, how are we going to connect this assumption into the formula that we have in here? So this question is actually very senseful. It's a beautiful question because it really can give us more understanding on how to go with our linear regression model or algorithm. So with this, what we will do is that we're going to incorporate this one and then to this one. So with that, we are going to rewrite our mathematical formula. So this one is actually the formula which has the incorporation of our assumption and that of our real formula. So what is this all about? Of course, this formula also assumes that our function is a linear one. And we said that a linear function tells us that in every function, in every input, there is always an equivalent one output. So we have P, Y given X and theta and equals to N, which is a normal distribution. We have Y given that mu times X with parameter variance times x. So maybe you would like to ask me, what does the theta here represent? So theta here is actually the parameters of our model. So we said that the parameters of our model 
RW and we have the the variance and so this one is actually the W transpose X that we had in or we have in our real model and or original model and then this one is actually the fixed version of our error so we just multiplied our variance with its value of x so for better understanding of all of these ideas let's first have an example which is just a one-dimensional problem or presentation so we have here mu x or sometimes this can be y which is equal to w0 plus w1 x which is equal to w t x of course we know that this w0 here is actually the intercept let me write here so we had this in our previous lessons the w1 here is the slope and also we learned that when we do the computation then we have to augment this with one so we had that in our lesson actually in mastering machine learning algorithms so please go back to that lesson for you to be able to understand how this one is computed using real numbers so when we have here x which is augmented with one this is actually a constant term which is a common trick in linear regression for us to be able to combine the intercept term and the other terms in the model but of course let me repeat that that doing this again really demands for the use of matrix notation what is this for why do we have to study this linear regression is the most widely used machine learning algorithm we use it when our data is continuous and we would like to predict the value of output based on inputs for example we want to predict the value of a house based on the number of rooms also our training data helps us to describe the relationship between the number of rooms and price in short a regression allows us to predict with statistical inference the effects of different variables on the outputs and the output of a set of input data because of the line created by linear regression we can minimize the distance between each data point and the line after all being said and done let's try this what is linear regression how do you relate linear regression to gaussian why do we have to study linear regression please don't forget to write your answers on the comment below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other very well do you want to know more about this course just click the card on your right screen you can enjoy our deep learning mastering machine learning algorithm natural language processing courses and also we have data science tips that you can learn from learn and upskill for free